Battlefield 5 gameplay has been out in the wild now for about a week or so, and we've covered most of the high-level points. For anything else major, we need to wait for the next big public showing, and either that's going to be an alpha test at some point in the future, or Gamescom in August. But there are plenty of smaller things that I experienced during my game time that I haven't really highlighted yet, or I haven't done a good job of explaining to you guys. These are just small touches that you only really catch glimpses of as the battle carries on around you. So today, I've got seven small immersive details that Battlefield 5 will be bringing to the table. And a massive thank you today to Billy Eat World for allowing me to use some of his captured gameplay for this video. I've already run out of footage and Billy kindly offered to share his own. So his channel is linked down below in the description and you guys should totally go over there and subscribe to him. First of all then, let's talk about some small weapon animation changes. Rather than reaching from literally the depths of nowhere to throw your grenades in Battlefield 5, it appears your soldier takes them off their own body and then throws them out in front of you, which is far more authentic. The same goes for fresh stick magazines for certain weapons. The animation appears to show the stick being retrieved from somewhere on your body. Now I haven't been able to confirm these details just yet, and for stick magazines it certainly doesn't happen for every single weapon in the game, but it's a small touch that adds a little bit more of immersive feeling to Battlefield 5. Specific to the airborne game mode, another one I noticed, when retrieving the explosives to plant on the artillery cannons, you sling the explosives over your head and carry it, rather than just running up to the object, collecting it magically, and then taking it towards the objective. These might only be very small changes, but they were immediately noticeable to me because they looked very different to the previous title, and now that they're in this game, it makes me wonder why this wasn't done before. The new soldier animation system in the game allows different soldier stances to come into play. Having spoken to Drunksy, Florian, a DICE developer in Stockholm, he confirmed that certain new third-person animations will only play on friendly soldiers. Things like slipping and sliding on mud and wet ground, that's meant to give a more authentic feeling to the setting that you're playing in. Other new animations, such as combat rolling out of windows, they will play on all soldiers in the game, both friendly and foe. No longer do you need to smash a window, by the way, before you jump through it. Just keep sprinting, and as long as it's a glass pane, your soldier will just plow right through it. Now, I do understand that some of these new animations could cause a little bit of confusion, especially at this time, with us not knowing the full extent of all of these new animations, exactly how many there are, and which ones play only for friendlies, so that you only see them on your team, and which ones play for all soldiers on the map, including enemies, so that everyone can see them. So as we move closer to launch, I will attempt to speak to the developers, get a full list of all of the animations that will now be present in Battlefield 5 that are tied to soldier movement, and then ask them to clarify which ones are available to all soldiers, friendly and foe, and which ones are friendly only. That way you can be more confident in game of what you're going to come up against, and so you know what enemy animations are going to play, which arguably is the more important of the two here. Next, the awesome morale-boosting soldier voiceover work is back in Battlefield 5. You might not have been able to hear it so far, because lots of the gameplay that YouTubers have released we've commentated over the top of, but Battlefield 1 took cues from Bad Company 2 using friendly soldier voices to call out if you landed a nice headshot, for example, or provided assistance with health or ammunition. That's back in Battlefield 5. These might only be very, very small audio touches, but when a friendly British soldier next to you says Tar Soldier in a Scottish accent for handing out some ammo, it is a subtle reminder to you that you should probably keep doing that and you're doing a good job in-game. It's just some more immersive audio, those kind of things that you wouldn't really notice if you weren't paying attention, but I did notice it quite a few times and it was really cool to hear that kind of stuff. Now, on the Narvik map, which is the only one we got to play at EA Play, you're able to topple snow off of the roofs of buildings by engaging some of the destruction animations. Now, when you think about it, yes, a massive explosion would cause loose snow to topple off of a sloped surface, and so that's exactly what DICE has done here. 
Now, I wasn't able to confirm if the falling snow could damage enemy players, but the rubble drops are still very much a thing in Battlefield 5. The broken materials coming down with the snow would indeed damage players should they be in the range of it falling on the ground. Something else now, I've already expressed my dislike for the sheer amount of snow obscuring my vision in the game at the moment. That's something that you guys didn't really agree with me on, and that's totally fine by the way. You're totally free to disagree with me, but having played the game and experienced it for about four or five hours, it did become a little bit annoying. That's something that will likely be tweaked before launch anyway. DICE has stated the visuals were cranked up to 11 for EA Play, but the way that the snow was physics bound really surprised surprised me. Snow would collide with walls and objects, collecting on corners of buildings and flowing through destroyed buildings as well. That was a really immersive touch. Now there were a few bugs with this, like buildings that had nothing destroyed on it whatsoever and somehow the snow was going right through a solid wall. That was clearly not supposed to happen, but for the most part it worked really well and by the time the game launches I hope DICE can get it working perfectly because it was certainly a very cool effect to see in action. You could take cover around the side of a building against the outside wall and have a clearer view than around the corner facing into the direction the snow was coming from. A really nice weather touch from DICE. The next thing you may have seen very, very briefly, but for the life of me I can't see people highlighting it all that much. Part of the new fortification system is the ability to board up broken windows. This is part of the fortifications that appear on the map once something is broken. So for example, if you smash a house wall down, you can then rebuild that section of the wall back up with sandbags. And if you're a support player, there are certain areas within broken buildings that you can then mount machine guns, build build those up and then fire them into the distance and use the house as a defensive position. The fortification system is really, really cool. But you can board up broken windows. This directly combats a player's ability to smash through the window and perform a combat role on the ground outside. You can't break the board down with just the soldier's own force. You're going to have to re-explode the fortification that's been built. And that's why I like fortifications so much. You can actually directly combat destruction for the first time in the Battlefield franchise. You have more control over map flow than you ever did before, and you can create your own cover. If you don't think a map has enough cover, likely there's going to be some fortification positions so you can make your own. That was a big complaint from Battlefield 1 that maps didn't have enough cover. Now you've got the tools to create your own. And lastly, I wanted to go over a new set of weapons added to Battlefield 1 and how they're going to operate during live gameplay. These medium machine guns, or MMGs, available at the moment to the machine gunner archetype within the support class, cannot be conventionally aimed down sight like other weapons can. You need to deploy the attached bipod either in prone or behind cover to access the sights of the weapon and therefore have much more control over where the bullets are likely to go. LMGs like the Bren, they do allow you to aim down sight in any scenario, but the MMGs when you attempt to aim down sight when not deployed on the bipod will simply zoom in the view that you already have and it doesn't offer any aimed accuracy bonuses whatsoever. This has been done to better reflect their use during combat and set them up really as defensive weapons. Also, if you overheat the MG34, which is the MMG we had access to at EA Play, the soldier will swap out the red hot barrel once it's overheated with a brand new one, which is a really nice touch from the animation team. Now I'm sure there are plenty of new features that I did miss during my playtime with Battlefield 5, especially when those things are small enough to miss a lot of the time. But the more we learn about the game, the more we see it out there, public playtests, alphas, betas, and eventually the final release, because there will still be things there that we won't have noticed yet, I'm sure we will find more things along the way. Thank you very much for watching today though, let me know what you think of all these additions down below in the comment section and if you've noticed anything else during the gameplay that you've watched on YouTube so far, maybe leave some comments down below too about those things and I'll give them a heart or upvote them so they go to the top of the comment section so more people can see some of these smaller changes in Battlefield 5. 
Make sure you subscribe to the channel with notifications switched on so you don't miss any of my future videos. Hopefully I'll have some more Battlefield 5 action coming up next week, but I think I'm going to take a little bit of time over the weekend to just relax. It's been a very busy two weeks for me, and I just need to rest a little bit. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.